Hello, thank you for joining us. My name is Jessica. I work at Escape Studios in the admissions team. And tonight's webinar is about getting into the VFX industry and uh, breaking into this competitive industry, more importantly. And joining us this evening is Gareth Gaydon, who is our head of admissions, and Andy Bressington, course development producer. So they're really going to give you an overview of the industry and the job roles and show real tips. So thank you very much for joining us, and I'll pass you over. Well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the Career in Visual Effects. This is the, the Lowdown webinar. Um, it's going to be myself and Andy presenting this this evening. Um, I suppose we better introduce ourselves first. Uh, my name's Gareth. I've worked in the visual effects and computer games industry um, for around about 11 years now. First five years working in the games industry, uh, mostly recruiting uh, video games artists and programmers to studios around the world, such as EA and Rockstar. Uh, for moving into the visual effects industry, where my main job was to help studios such as Framestore, Mill, and PC um, to help them find the visual effects artists that they were looking for as well. Um, I then moved to Escape Studios um, and did a number of roles here, but now I am head of student recruitment. So my job at the moment is to make sure that we get the right students onto our courses so they go on to be. A success in the industry. Ooh, that's a hard one to follow, isn't it? So I'm Andy. Uh, I've uh, been at Skate for about three years now, and my current role is as um, it's a strange title. It's called course development producer. But so I do lots of different things at Escape. Um, but my background is as um, mainly as a VFX producer. Uh, having worked my way up through the industry, um, started out as a runner at quite a late age actually, um, and I've worked in VFX for about sort of ten years now. So um, I've got quite a good understanding of how the industry works and, um, and and the way to get into it as well. So I hope that we can be useful to you today. And uh, I'm going to hand back over to Gareth in a minute. Um, he's going to. Um, He's going to talk to you about a few bits and bobs, and then I'll come in later. Okay. So, um, first of all, we're just going to do a very brief uh, introduction of what is visual effects. I'm aware that a lot of people who are watching this um, have studied, but we do have a few people listening who are considering a role in visual effects. So, briefly, what is visual effects? Well, it's basically it's a combination of CG, or computer graphics, and live action, normally used in film, TV, and commercials. Um, if you can look on the screen now, we can see uh, a shot from The Life of Pi, which won the Oscar for Best Visual Effects. Now, in this film, 90% um, of this film was done in post production. So the only real elements for most of the film were the actor and the board. And everything else was um, done in post production after. So the CG characters, such as the tiger, um, and the sky and the background, that all was done in post-production that a team of visual effects artists took away the blue screen or the green screen and made that into one visual effects shot. So the next shot we see here, this is a shot from John Carter of Mars. And if we look at this shot, the only real element um, was the actor down the front. So John Carter right down the front there, he was shot on a blue screen and all the other elements were built by a team of artists um, and put in after the filming had finished. So this would have been a whole team of um, visual effects artists. This would have been character artists to build the alien monsters, um, animators to make them come to life, compositors um, to put all those elements together so it looks like the shot that you see now um, and one final image. So, so why are we promoting this? Well, the visual effects industry is it's a growing industry. Um, it's, it's come a long way in a relatively small space of time. Um, if we rewind back to the days of 2000, which is when I was just about finishing my degree in visual effects, there was a film that came out called Gladiator. Um, Gladiator won the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects back in the day. Um, that was done, uh, that was actually one of the first films done in London and it's done by a company called The Mill. Um, and that whole shot, if we look at it, it had around 
around about 70 to 90 shots in there that were done in post-production and the team were around about 50 to 60 artists worked on that and that won the best uh, visual effects Academy Award. We fast forward to today and the likes of Life of Pi which we just looked at, um, the likes of Avatar, uh, Gravity, um, nearly every shot in those films has some elements of post-production in that so you're talking instead of 70 and 90 shots talking thousands of shots per film and teams of artists not just working in one studio but globally um, to complete these projects. So that's how far we've come. So I mean taking the British film industry as an example there but it employs 44,000 people and 7,000 of those people work in visual effects. It's actually probably a bit more than that now, this is probably about a year, year and a half out of date and just to tell you how much it means to the government is 4.6 billion contributed to Britain's GDP um, last year and that's continuing to grow. So um, where is the visual effects in me? So Andy, where, where's, the, where's the hotbeds of visual effects? <laughs> well, um, obviously Los Angeles was kind of like the, the sort of the main place a few years ago and then London has, um, has really sort of sprung up I think with the success of the Harry Potter films back in the early 2000s, it really started to take off over here. So London is now a very well respected and a kind of major player in the VFX industry. So with it, so I suppose what you could ask there is where does it exist in England or Britain or Europe and where does it exist in the rest of the world? So if you're listening to this in, in England and you're, or, or Britain and you know you've just finished a degree or you're thinking about working in visual effects then the chances are you'll probably have to move to London to work in it, especially if it's on feature films. Um, and likewise for people from Europe as well, you know, the, there are obviously little VFX houses in most of the major European cities, but when it comes to film work, most of that, for the European side of things, is done in London. So, you know, that's that's got its advantages and its disadvantages um, for you as a person coming to live here. Um, in terms of the rest of the world, there's a, there's a massive industry still in LA, there's a, a, a big industry in Canada, Vancouver, uh, Montreal, uh, there's a big industry in Singapore, I believe. Yeah, Singapore's um, up and coming. Uh, yeah. China and India. Um, and the idea for a lot of the VFX houses these days is that they can pretty much have like a 24-hour uh, workflow. So when the office closes in London, it may be opening up in Hong Kong, no, Singapore would it be, opening there. And likewise, when that one closes, somewhere in the west coast of America would be opening up. So they sort of have a, you know, a lot of the, the, big, the big players have this 24-hour pipeline. So anyway, to answer that question, where is the VFX industry? In this country and in Europe, you really got to be thinking about London. And for the rest of the world, Canada, uh, LA, uh, China, but you know that's that's yeah. probably not so somewhere you're going to work. Yeah. You know. Australia and New Zealand's got pockets as well. Um, everyone's probably heard of Wet Up, that does very well down in New Zealand. Um, and, and South America's got a, an emerging market in post production as well, but it's got some very good studios out there. Um, as well. so, so yeah, I think as well the days are gone when. Um, people used to just stay in one country and work for a couple of studios. I think today's visual effects artists, especially some of our uh, more recent graduates who over the last few years, um, tend to be um, travelling around and maybe doing one film in London and maybe going to Vancouver and doing a film and looking at Singapore as well. So um, I think if you're looking at this industry, and especially if you like to travel, you do have options there as well. So, um, so next, um, who works in visual effects? Um, well, the ideal people that we're looking for um, are people with both technical and creative skills, and that's not that common, uh, really. People either tend to go more technical or more creative, but the ideal visual effects artist has an understanding of both, and, and they use specialist skills in the use of specialist software tools. So there's, there's some people assume that it's the, the software and the computers that do the work, and that's not the case. You need to be an artist and the problem solver behind that software to get a good result uh, and to get the, the effect that you're looking for as well. 
So just going to hand over to Andy now, and he's going to go through some of the, the roles in Visual Effects, the different types of roles and some of the entry level positions. Um, then after that, we're going to show you a couple um, of example showrooms from some of our recent graduates um, and give you a bit of advice how you can get into this industry. So I'll just switch this over now.